Hello everybody and welcome back. So we are working on the Sioux Baru. It's uh, the Blue Baru. That's what my fiance calls it. And this thing is going to get a full audio system makeover. So right now it's got the Harman Kardon. It is limited so it's got all the options and everything upgraded sound system with the Harman Kardon. It has an amplifier underneath the passenger seat. But uh, you know of course when you're adding aftermarket speakers, amplifiers, subwoofers, and all that sort of stuff, you can't really use the factory amp uh, other than to provide the pre-out voltage that's going to go into our line output converter. So I think the first thing I want to do is try to wire in the line out converter and get that mounted and that's just going to be my first step. I also want to take the door panels off and see what it looks like back there for speakers. I just want to see what kind of room we have for mounting depth and that's going to determine what speakers we buy but I already think I have a set picked out and I'm going to order them shortly. So I'm kind of working on that. But uh, yeah, I'm going to start pulling the passenger seat out, I think, and see if we can fit our line out converter on top of the seat. I mean, underneath the seat, rather, on, right on top of the amplifier. And uh, yeah, we'll just see how that goes. So I did get the door all stripped down to bare metal like I wanted to do. But uh, this is kind of uh, a different ball game here. I'm going to show you guys that on the other side. But for right now, um, we'll ignore all this stuff here that I've done. And we're just going to go to the seat. So I'm going to bust off those two bolts there. They look like maybe uh, 15s um, or 14s probably since it's, um, you know. And I, I don't know what uh, Subaru uses for sizes to be honest. So we'll, we're going to find out. But I'm going to knock those guys out. Uh, they had these covers on them which you just push down on this, this tab in the center here which pops through this little hole. Push down on that and pull them off. And uh, should come off easily. I just realized the bolts... Oh, these are like, these are just pins. These mat holders are kind of weird. I don't know how I feel about them. But yeah, I'm going to undo these two bolts, and then we'll uh, motorize the seat forward, and we'll see if there's bolts in the rear, and we'll try to uh, move the seat up so it'll be easiest to remove from the vehicle. Um, I don't know if I'm going to remove it or just lean it over into the back. I think that's what I'll do. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and bust these two bolts out, and we'll get the seat tilted. Yeah, i got to hand it to Subaru. These guys make it pretty easy. 415s. The seat leans back there's enough wire to where you can actually reach the connector down there possibly um, or maybe the harness is hardwired in I don't know I didn't look at that but uh, it doesn't matter I'm not gonna sorry I'm not gonna unplug it um, we're just gonna leave it like that it's perfect and I'm just gonna run everything like this as long as I can run it under the sill plates like I would like to with the RCAs uh, I think we should be all set we just got to run that to the rear that's the only thing we should have to run out of this so yeah, and I just gotta find out what wires do what, which I'm gonna look over here. So we got a blue and white, and I'm seeing a blue and white up in here. So I'm gonna test that wire and see if that's the same wire. And then if we if we know that that's our right speaker input, then uh, we're all set. So we can take all of our uh, outputs from here into into the other guy. So I'm gonna figure some of this stuff out, and I'll get back to you guys on what's what. I did some research and I figured out how this thing works. It's the following evening and basically I got to open this thing up and change the jumper configuration to do audio summing and then it will sum everything that it receives in all three of these channels and output uh, your main and then your second and then even your, your third here is I think the third guy is the sub on this one here and uh, that way We'll be able to get, you know, two sets of RCAs and then the sub, but we're only going to use the, the two, I think, because we're just going to do front speakers for now. It may change later. But anyway, um, yeah, this thing should be good. And we're just going to have to go on the other side and remove the door panel, so I'll end up showing you guys that in this video, how to do the door panel. It's pretty easy. And then you just take all the stuff off. And I'm just probing this stuff just to... Um, you know, verify the which wires are which, and I don't know what I went over in the last clip, but basically these two wires right here are responsible for the woofer. I wrote it down on the board over there, but the blue and white wires here are the right uh, door speaker, and you can see the connector comes down right here. So this is plugged into the speaker. This is the blue and white. That's how I knew here and here, but there's two sets of blue and white. I don't know if the other one is for the other side or not. Uh, the only thing I don't know is positive negative. So I'm going to see if I can find anything on the internet about what's positive negative. Uh, otherwise, I'm not really sure what way there is to tell. 
I'm gonna look into that. Um, ouch. Otherwise, um, I just keep hitting stuff on this guy. So be careful. But it's nice. Subaru makes it really easy. I do like how this is set up, and uh, it's gonna be a nice, easy install. I think it's it's not going too too bad just yet. So yeah, I got these two wires here, and these are the tweeter on the right side. So we're gonna do uh, the tweeters. So this is uh, right. So these two tweeter wires right here are gonna go into this uh, this side, the right side of the main input. And then this is gonna be woofers in this center section here. And then the sub is probably just the two wires just gonna go right in here. So I'm gonna go and find out in the rear what goes to the sub. And we'll figure that out. I'm gonna assume it's probably red and green. And uh, that's just a guess. And that's probably what's gonna go to the sub. And then we'll put that in here too, and it'll sum everything, and it'll give us our our three channels here. And uh, yeah, that should be it. So you can see here, uh, this guy is set up. This is it comes with the pins set up uh, on separate. So what I did is I moved the jumper pins to summed. You can see where it says summed and separate and the jumper is on that side and there's the pins exposed on where it says separate on the bottom that means we're on the summed portion so I did it to both of them so everything will be summed uh, and there's also something here this is auto mode I forget what auto mode is I'm gonna have to look that up but I think auto mode is probably what we want and then GTO is a uh, great turn on that's where it turns itself on but um, when it senses input on the speaker so you don't need to run a remote turn on which is nice we're gonna use that and then this is 200 ohm ISO and ground. So I don't know what that is either. I gotta figure out what that is and uh, I'll get back to you guys on that. But that's as far as we're gonna go there. I mounted it to the plate that mounts on top of the amp. I gotta cut the screws because they're too long. I didn't have anything shorter, but um, I'm just gonna chop those off or something with a pair of pliers. And that's that. So we have it mounted. I'm gonna go mount it in there. It'll be easier to do all of our connections. I'll find a little screwdriver that fits in here and we can start adding our wires and getting everything all plumbed in. All right guys, so we don't want auto. We're gonna take this jumper off here and we're gonna put it on off. And then we're gonna take this jumper on GTO and we're gonna just leave it on there because we want it on. So that is it for that. I didn't see what this, um, I think this is if you have some kind of ground loop problem. Um, I don't really know. Uh, I still have to look that one up, but I know that we don't want auto mode. So I'm probably just going to put this cover back on and we'll be all set to go. So guys, in an effort to make a good solid ground, I came in here and did a little bit of grinding. Shadows in the way, but did a little bit of grinding on this with a uh, little, you know, 90 degree grinder. Ground the back side of this, which is going to be on top of that, and the top side of this and put dielectric grease on everything. Now I'm going to take this ring terminal and throw some wire in there and run it to the negative and that's going to be our ground here and you know you always want to make sure you got a good ground so the chassis is going to be ground for the amplifiers it's going to be ground for this component and uh, hopefully we don't have any ground loops or anything no feedback because I figure that's the best way to do it you're supposed to ground everything to the same location so alter the chassis so that's what we're doing I don't want to piggyback off the ground that goes to the amp I don't want to back feed or anything like that so I figure we'll just do it this way right off the bat so I'm going right to the chassis. I uh, should bolt this whole thing down and hopefully we have a nice solid ground. I want to try to vacuum under there first and then I'll put it all back together and then this thing will be wired up and all we got to do from there is uh, run our RCAs. So I just got to figure out how we're going to run those to the rear and the speakers got to be run as well. So RCAs will probably be our next thing coming off of here and I'm also sideline also working on the door trying to figure out how I want to do this. Um, I think I'm just going to put the sound deadening over the wiring just because it's easier and if we need to get to the wiring someday or the window regulators I'll just cut it and we'll get in there then. So I got to feed wire through the door boot here. So I got to send some through here and it's got to come up through this section and I'm probably just going to I think what I'm going to do is slice slice a hole right where it comes out right here and have the wire come on the inside of the door and then have that speaker wire just down over here to hook up to the speaker. I think that seems like the best way to do it. It's going to be hard to fish the wire through here so I'm going to try to get like a tool in there that will probably make it easier to pull through. 
So those are all the things I gotta do right now. So I'm just working on all that stuff. And uh, yeah, we're doing good though, otherwise. So I got the ground wired up. And the wire goes over there into our ring terminal underneath there. So that's all set. And this guy, I saw the light come on when I put the wire in. So I think he's all wired up and set. Uh, I just gotta run the RCAs off of him. So he's chilling. And uh, now what we're looking at doing is running speaker wires. So I already went ahead and ran this one wire. Wanted to see how it would go. So I ran this one through and it runs through the boot here, which is kind of a pain, but it always is. And I gotta tape this back up, this whole thing. You can't really pull it apart. And the boot is one solid thing all the way to here. So I made a slit in the boot right after it comes through the door. You can see the wire comes through in here. And uh, I ran the wire in that way, starting and pushed it down. Pulled it out at the bottom here and then fished it through here to get it in the car. So this is going to come from the crossover, which is one of these guys. So the speakers did come. So I have stuff to hook up now. So this guy's going to get mounted either in here or up under the dash somewhere. So I'll find a good spot for that. And then the other set of wires will go up to the tweeter up here, which I have some brackets for, and we'll work on that soon. So I at least have this wire routed. So I'm gonna go through now and start my sound deadening. I cut out a section for this area, and uh, it fits in this factory constraints here where that goo was. And uh, I'm gonna add on over here too. We'll see what I end up doing, but... Um, yeah, the plan is right now I'm going to do the back wall and the good stuff. So I'm going to get a tape measure, measure what I'm working with, try to cut a strip that will fit in there, get some decent coverage. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'm going to clean everything with denatured alcohol first to make sure we get good adhesion. So I'll put that on there, and I'll roll it one piece here, probably a piece in the middle. And the top looks like it has a little sound deadening uh, right there, but I'll probably either go over it or just go on the sides of it. Um, with some of the other um, aluminum based stuff. I don't want to waste the good stuff too much. Um, I'm just going to run that down here and over here. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll save the good stuff. So I've got the whole inside of the door stuffed so far and uh, it came out pretty good. So now I think I'm going to proceed to wall the whole thing off and then I'm going to try to just cut. I'm leaving this long. I kind of trimmed around the factory a uh, little piece there. I'm going to yank that off. It's probably going to be all gooey on there, unfortunately, but uh, hopefully not too bad. And I'm going to try to trim nicely around this so I can be on this and provide a little bit of deadening for this as well. Um, but yeah, we're all deadened on the inside. You can see all the sound skins in here. So all this is doing pretty good. Try to look for any rattles. I try to like tap on the door and make sure we're not going to have any rattles. Uh, this stuff right here is going to dampen this whole panel right here. So, you know, and these openings are going to be covered. I went through and used this tape on just about everything. Uh, that way, oh, where does that go? That clips somewhere. Um, oh, maybe it goes on to here. Yeah, it clips into here. So, yeah, basically went through and used fabric tape on everything. And this is like anti-vibration. There was some stuff in here that already had some tape on it, but I just went over everything with that fabric tape uh, instead of the, not the foam areas, but everything else I hit with the foam tape, uh, fabric tape rather, because this stuff, this is what it is. It, it's nice because it doesn't, it's not going to uh, rattle like, and, and chafe, you know, it's definitely nice because if you go the extra mile with this, you're not going to have any rattles, and I know Subarus can be uh, rattly, that's what I've heard, so if we, uh, if we deaden all the uh, vibrations here, and we put this fabric tape on everything, there's no chance that we have a rattle when this thing goes back together. So I'm kind of working on the back side of the door panel now, and this is really like going the extra mile, but I did put some material on the back side of the door panel, and I was kind of tapping on this to see any potential sources of rattles. And uh, the only one that I had was the light here. So this, this light in the bottom was rattling. I took it out and wrapped some fabric tape around it, reclipped it. Now it doesn't move, it doesn't rattle. So I fixed that one, but these clips tend to rattle a little bit. So I'm gonna put a little bit of tape in there and then clip the clips in there after that. So the clips shouldn't rattle against the panel 
and then I may put a little bit of tape uh, on the door panel itself and then maybe cut a slit in it and that way uh, the clips will still pop in but they won't be inclined to rattle and that way we make sure we have all the contact points covered and everything's isolated uh, by foam and some sort of fabric so that way we don't have any vibrations in the door and you're not going to hear any little rattles and everything should come through and sound really nice through the speakers so this is kind of taking stuff to the extra uh, the extra mile and this is what kind of separates the pretty good sound systems from the really good sound systems because this thing should be uh, hopefully nice you could hear a pin drop you know I mean we're only doing the doors and yada yada but the floor has carpet and dew underneath which helps to dampen quite a bit and uh, the dash is kind of large in your way but the doors are definitely where a lot of that sound leaks in um, from uh, any vehicle you know and especially a Subaru so hopefully we we're able to uh, remove some of that road noise too not too much because we're not using like noise canceling mats or anything but should do a decent job removing some of the noise so I'm gonna go ahead and try to piece this thing on now and uh, you know fish fish this through uh, all my cut holes and everything like that and then uh, we'll all line it all up so that should be uh, pretty fun guys this is kind of what you're after you want to try to cover all the exposed areas of the door you're essentially trying to make the door into an enclosure for the speaker I know it's like way too big of an enclosure but still if you can dampen the back wave um, it'll be less cancellation so that's ideal that way we only have what's coming out of the front that's audible and there's no cancellation going on so you kind of want to push it in and get enough of it to be stuck down because it is a dampening material so you can hear there's no panel resonance you know no vibrations in it so that's awesome it sounds really good there I gotta figure out a couple of things where the hole is because there's a screw that goes here I thought it was here but it's it's got to be somewhere else didn't line up as good as I thought on that um, so I'll have to find out where that screw goes in there and I, well, how I'm going to do that is taking off the other side there and we'll try to pinpoint it. It's probably somewhere, actually, is it way up here? It is way up here. So I think we're, I think we're okay. So we're probably just going to put a little something on here, but I don't really hear any crazy vibrations. This top panel has, you know, a little bit left to be desired with deadening, but I think once we clip everything to it, it'll be nice. I got the door panel deadened. Um, so right now I'm just waiting on some silicone speaker cones that I ordered that are going to go here Then the speaker will mount to that and it'll have like a little uh, area here where it's going to point it right inside uh, of the, the grate so something I can do now is wire in the crossover and then start running wires and RCAs uh, to go to the rear and that way we're just continually moving along here and I still have the other side to do but you know getting one side all finalized and uh, planned out is good for me too so might make this the the one side 
uh, in this video. We'll see how long it's getting. It's probably getting a little long. And, uh, yeah, that's that. So, this thing's coming out pretty nice. I'm excited. It's going to sound nice, too, hopefully. So, let's get going. All right, guys, so this is going to cap it off for this video. I'm just going to show you what I've done so far. And that was put the sound skins on, and then the cones came in. This is like a silicone uh, cone a speaker ring here, and it helps to project the sound through the grill and into the cabin, and none of it gets lost in the door panel because it's all held in. And there's some waterproofing back there too, so it kind of extends past the rear. I have the other one somewhere. I'll show you guys when I do the other side, but that's going to be for part two. I'm going to do that side, and I'll walk through a little bit more of what I did and show you guys that process and running the wires and stuff. Uh, I ran all the wires under here. I have speaker wire. The RCAs are all run to the rear. I'll show you guys that. I have remote turn-on wire that I ran out of the line-out converter because that's going to give me a remote turn-on signal to turn my amplifiers on. So I got these two RCAs and speaker wire and remote turn-on all run into the trunk here. And that's it for this side. So we're going to try to keep our big power wires separate from the RCAs so we don't get that feedback. So the big power wire we're going to run on that side and the ground is going to be somewhere local that we'll make in the trunk. So I still want to find out where I'm going to mount the amps, but I've been thinking about trying to do a, a, an amp rack on the wall of some type. So I'm going to look into doing that and just see where everything fits. i got to get the subwoofer box set it up. So i got a lot to do still, so there's definitely going to be a part two, possibly a part three. But uh, yeah, stay tuned and see the rest of this project, guys. Thank you for watching and peace. Still need to make sure that the window goes down with the speaker cone over here, but uh, as long as that works out and the door panel goes on, I may have to trim maybe right here or some other areas to make sure the door panel sits flush, but as long as it does, I think it'll be nice because it'll really minimize all the rattles and the vibration. You know, panel pretty well deadened. I don't really hear too many rattles in it anymore, you know. Well, let's see. The difference here on I don't want to pinch this. Let's get a little comparison here. Let's listen to this. All my knuckles are smashed up. front much deeper tone much more muffled so I don't know probably won't make a huge difference but I think it does uh, make the door heavier it the, the car feels higher quality when you got heavier doors I'm not gonna lie that doesn't matter at all but people will shut a door that's heavy and assume that it's a higher quality vehicle and the sound deadening definitely makes the doors a bit heavier so you know between that and all the other speakers and stuff um, we're adding a bit of weight to the vehicle but I think it's worth it because it's going to quiet it down a, a good amount as far as rattles go. So we'll see how it sounds afterwards. I'll have to go for a test drive. That's something that uh, you're only going to pick up in person if you're really observant and uh, definitely not on camera. But I'm just going to keep going through and laying the sound skins inside here. I think I'm pretty much done on the inside on this one. But I'm just going to clean the outside and cut that piece out of the sound skins material lay it over and stick it on and I'll show you guys probably a time lapse of that and uh, that'll be that. We got to fabric tape all these harnesses too. So you might have seen on the other side everything is fabric taped so that's what I'm going to do on this side too and uh, make sure none of the wires chafe or anything like that. So that's that and uh, moving on.